Okay, everyone, welcome to our Creaky Kitchen Friendsgiving. It's so great to see all of you. I'm Zoe Rothblatt, patient advocate and community outreach manager with GHLF and Creaky Joints. Um, you know, welcome to our free Friendsgiving celebration. I'm joined by always by our co-host, Corey Greenblatt. Corey, how's it going tonight? I see you in the kitchen. Are you cooking along with Chantel? Welcome. Yeah, I am. Uh, you know, when we talked to Chantel this week, we mentioned doing, she mentioned doing mac and cheese, and uh, that's one of my favorite things you could possibly mention. So, of course, I would be cooking alongside her. Um, and, of course, uh, I wanted to welcome everyone else back, just like you did. Uh, I wanted to start by kind of wishing everyone here and Creek Kitchen in general a happy birthday. Uh, it was exactly a year ago that uh, Chantel, Zoe, and I came together to with the idea to bring people together around the holidays and uh, really connect around something we all love, which is food. Um, so it's been great to see how Creaky Kitchen has grown and we've learned so much from our guest hosts over the year. Um, so thank you to everyone who's kind of tuned in and stayed with us for the year and really stay tuned for uh, what's to come because it's really exciting. Yes, amen to that. Thanks for that reminder, Corey. We're so excited that it's Creaky Kitchens. Um, birthday and our second annual Friendsgiving. So you know what that means. We're getting two recipes from Chantel tonight. Um, but before I turn it over to her, I just wanted to take a few moments to say, you know, this is our second holiday season during COVID. And it's, it, uh, you know, many of us are still feeling lonely and isolated. So we just wanted to, you know, take this hour to come together as a community and let everyone know this is our way of celebrating safely with each other and ushering in the holiday season together as a creaky community. And we're so grateful to see familiar faces and new faces on tonight as our community keeps growing. So thank you everyone for joining. And as always, feel comfortable leaving your camera on or off, whatever is good for you. And I think you know where the chat box is from now by now. So definitely share your comments, share your thoughts, and we'd love to hear from you throughout the night. So Chantel, are you ready to get cooking? Absolutely. Happy anniversary, Creepy Kitchen. This is so awesome. Um, again, as always, honored to be able to invite all of you guys into my kitchen, which is not as big as it looks by the size of the people that are in the room, but um, just so happy to have you all here. And yes, like Corey said, mac and cheese is what's happening tonight. Um, I also, at some point in the last couple of months of doing this and, and a year of doing this, realized that, you know what, it's Thursday and I still have people to feed. I have my husband to feed. I have family that lives close by. So just like a regular, Friendsgiving, um, there's multiple things happening right now. And this is my magic whisk, we'll talk about it later. Um, back here, I have a pot of collard greens that I started last night, chilled, and they taste better the second day. So that's what's back there with turkey. And it's really, really good. Over here, I have um, the sweet potatoes that I think there might be a recipe uploaded for, but if not, I will type it and send it and we'll put it on the Creepy Kitchen uh, site. But it is my foolproof braised um, sweet potatoes because if you think about it, on Thanksgiving, on any major holiday, on any time where you're gonna have all your family over, a gathering, whatever, the oven is prime space. So why take up space with things that you could probably do on the stove? So that's where I came up with my braised um, sweet potatoes, which are kind of, dare I say identical to my grandmother's Savannah sweet potatoes, God bless her soul, but I think I innovated on them just a little bit and fun fact, she liked mine better than hers. So same thing with the greens too. So in this pot, I have melted three tablespoons of butter over medium heat. And like we have said before, mise en place is already done. You guys, if you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you already saw that I posted a picture of all the mise en place that was done earlier before I went and did my face. So here we have three tablespoons of just standard AP flour and one tablespoon of, I believe it's the best, Coleman's English mustard. You can buy other powdered mustard, feel free, but Coleman's is just my particular brand. So that goes in and we're just gonna move this around for a few minutes. 
And this is called making a roux. We're not going to make a dark roux like you would if you were going to be making like a gumbo. This is going to be more of a blonde roux. Um, and you're just doing this so that you cook off that flour's flavor or lack thereof, if, you, if, you, if I will. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And this you just going to move around for a couple of minutes. Um, I've already got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And <clears throat> while I'm doing this, which is an incredibly boring thing, very boring stuff, no one cares about this. I had a question and I, I, I put it in my email to Zoe and Corey. So as you can see, I've got a lot of pots, I've got a lot of pans, I've got a lot of stuff going on here. I gotta clean this up. So in the chat, if you guys could put how you guys manage the cooking and cleanup of a big family dinner. That would be awesome because I'm looking for suggestions because <laughs> essentially my whole sink area just becomes a giant pile by the end of the night. And I know clean while you cook and all that, but do you see how much is going on here? I'm not cleaning right now. I'm talking to you guys. So how is it that you guys manage that? Let me know. So our room came together pretty fast, which is great. So what I'm gonna do now, and if you can see it, I don't know if you guys can see, you probably can't, maybe you can, but it's a nice like light blonde roux. What's gonna go into here is gonna be three cups of milk. And this is a lactose-free milk, which is what I use. I pour it in slow and away from me so that I don't get hurt. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and get all that roux up off the bottom. And this is gonna be what our thickener is. Um, I took this milk out probably like half an hour ago. So it's not like icy, icy cold, but it has taken a little bit of a chill off. So it is gonna take our temperature down. So I'm gonna turn us up a little bit. Also to that, I am going to add one diced onion. It was a small onion, um, about half a cup or so. And that's just for flavor. It's going to basically dissolve. You won't even notice it in the finished product. No one ever does. So don't tell them. Oh wait, I just told everybody. Ignore that, you never heard that. Um, so the onions are in there, they're doing their thing. Um, and then I'm gonna add one bay leaf. I had a friend one time ask me like if I put a bouquet garni into my, um, into my simmering liquid. And I said, no, it's just one bay leaf. And she was just like blown away. I'm like, no, don't need a whole bouquet garni. One day leaf, done. And I know I have measurements online, but you know me, I'm not a big measurer. This is paprika. I like it. I like it in my mac and cheese. It's kind of a little bit of a secret, adds a nice little flavor. Just about a quarter, half teaspoon or so. And so we're gonna stir that all up and we're gonna bring this up to a boil. So once this comes up to the boil, I'm going to let it go for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to temper in an egg. Um, not sure if you guys have someone that you want to speak to in the midst of while this comes to a boil because that's going to take maybe eh, five, six minutes. Um, and then I'll be tempering in an egg, adding in the cheese. I really want you guys to see the cheese trick. So maybe I'll do that right now. Give me one second. Can you guys see this? Yeah, you can see me. Cool. Shredding cheese with RA or any sort of autoimmune issue that affects your hands, not so fun because you're grating, you're grating, you're grating. We were talking about this before. Sometimes you grate too hard and you go too far and you get your knuckle and that's not good eats. So the best thing that I have found so far is this awesome plate. Thank goodness for my dad. He gifted this to me. This is a, a shredding plate and I'll take it out at the end and show you guys. But it's just on your food processor, it's one of those accessories that we really don't think about. And it's phenomenal because I go ahead, I turn this on, done. And I shredded a pound of cheddar cheese probably in two minutes before we got on. So you guys that were on before um, saw that. So pretty simple, really easy. I use two different kinds of cheddar. Um, they're from a particular place that we get up here in the Northeast. I'm not sure if it's available nationwide, but it's a company called Cabot and all of their cheeses are lactose free. And if that is something that means something to you, like it does to me, that's why I patronize them. Um, so 
So right now for the moment, we're just waiting for this to come up to a boil and then we're gonna temper an egg to cut down on dishes. I'm gonna crack the egg into here, whisk it, grab a ladle off camera, <laughs> and then uh, temper the egg in. And then we'll be adding the cheese, the macaroni. The macaroni is already cooked. I did that before so that I could use the same pot to make the cheese sauce. So again, cutting down on pots and pans. Um, and then I'm just gonna stick it into my favorite little casserole dish. Happens to be this one only because it comes with a lid. Really simple dimple, right? No need for saran wrap or tin foil or anything like that. It's a great lid and it's also really stable so you can still layer stuff on top of it. Um, my oven is preset to 350 degrees, but we're boiling. It's preset to 350 degrees and this is gonna go in for about half an hour. Um, I'm gonna say tempering an egg isn't really all that exciting. Um, where basically what you're doing is you're using a bit of this liquid into the egg so that you can temper it and you get a smooth mixture as opposed to a cup of scrambled eggs. And knock on wood, I've never scrambled an egg while tempering. This will not be the night to start either. So I'm gonna to toss it back to Zoe for the moment because I am thickening up right here. This is doing amazing and it smells really, really good with the onion and the bay leaf and the paprika, it's just delish. So I'm gonna to toss it back to Zoe and we can listen to some of our creepy friends and how they like to spend their Thanksgiving and Friendsgiving. Awesome, I just learned so much from you. I did not know what tempering an egg was. And I was like, I sure hope Chantel is going to explain because even though I watched about, I don't know, 17 or 18 seasons of Top Chef, I have not mastered that. So we're mastering it here in the Creaky Kitchen tonight. So thank you. Um, so for our next portion, uh, if some of you are on last year, you'll remember that we heard from a bunch of people in the community just about either a favorite recipe for friends Thanksgiving, a favorite memory story, um, you know, how we're adjusting plans given the ongoing pandemic. So we're going to hear from a bunch of wonderful, wonderful leaders in our community tonight. But of course, I'll start off by sharing uh, just to kick things off. So in my house, for some reason, we always ended up not eating the whole day of Thanksgiving. It was sort of like, okay, try to steal a muffin from the table. And I used to show up so hungry and just like that did not work for me with chronic illness. I'd show up so hangry and uncomfortable to the Thanksgiving table. And it's one of my favorite holidays. And then I thought, wait, why am I enduring that? So a few years ago, we started this tradition or rather I started it and roped everyone in that um, we have a really nice breakfast and watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade downstairs in our basement. We have a projector, so we throw it up on the big screen, sit with the dogs, and I make this um, broccoli quiche. And my secret ingredient for the quiche is that I squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in it, which just gives it this really delicious flavor. So if you like quiches, I highly recommend to try that. And ever since then, we make it every single year. And that is my Thanksgiving tradition that I brought to my family. Um, I'm going to ask Corey if he can step away from his kitchen, if he would like to share. Yeah, I'm happy to share. I am at the same point that Chantel's at, we're just letting things boil. Um, so a uh, uh, favorite memory that I have with Thanksgiving actually took place and I'm going to steal it from my fiance's family, but something that they do every year. Um, they, I come from a family where we eat Thanksgiving dinner when the sun comes down. Um, so we're eating it around six, seven o'clock, which is very late apparently by my fiance's family standards. They tend to eat around like one, two o'clock. But the thing that they do beforehand is they do a family football game. Uh, where they do one side of her family against another. Um, and I got to join it for the first time a couple of years ago. And it was, I, I got to admit, a really fun way to kind of work up an appetite and then just engorge yourself on every bit of food that you could possibly see. Um, something that her family does around Thanksgiving that I really love is a lot of their meals are very kind of almost like appetizers, like their favorite things that the family eats are things like uh, a spinach and artichoke dip or a famous, like uh, they call it their, it's after their grandfather's zippy salami. Um, and it's all this salami and mustard and, and baked dish that just tastes amazing. And 
I don't really know why it tastes so amazing, but I love it uh, so much. And I'm also one of these rare people, apparently, that actually likes turkey during Thanksgiving. Um, my fiance and her family actually are not turkey fans. So I just love the classic, but Thanksgiving with kind of just being around your family and having an excuse to just eat as much as possible for a day. Um, it, it's always been one of my favorite holidays to kind of celebrate, uh, go around, see my family, uh, and just kind of enjoy being around each other and enjoy eating really good food. Um, so yeah, that's always what I think about with around this holiday. And uh, I'm really happy to kind of be here for the second year in a row. And uh, I'm happy to kind of be sharing this all with everyone on the call today. So thanks for joining. Awesome. Thanks, Corey. And it looks like stuff behind you is steaming. So you might need to get back to that. Next up, we have Stephanie. Uh, I see your smiling face and I'm so glad you were able to take a break and come on and join us tonight. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm actually in the library because I was just on break from class, but I got to see a little bit of Chantel's recipe. I'm getting hungry. I haven't eaten dinner. <laughs> this is all really exciting. Um, I was really thinking about kind of what story I wanted to share. And I guess I'll start. Usually what we do is we kind of cook. We do like what um, Corey's fiance's family does we eat dinner at like one or two o'clock and then spend the rest of the day eating and um and then we usually play monopoly after now my family is kind of extra they are all business people so my mom is a cpa my dad is like you know a big manager of a construction company and my brother is in banking and um, so things get a little hairy during Monopoly, but usually we like to employ one kind of like family rule. What we like to do is if you're not paying attention and someone lands on your property, they get to keep going without paying the rent. So it kind of helps keep everybody engaged and keeps it like pretty competitive. And then sometimes we also like employ another rule that if someone like catches the other person and rats them out, then they get a cut. They get like a percentage of the rent. <laughs> so we go a little bit nuts. But um, last year was pretty interesting. I don't know if it's too uh, early to joke about COVID, but last year I kind of cooked this whole elaborate meal for Thanksgiving and during it was during COVID. So none of my family could come except my parents. And they got there late. And then um, literally they arrived, the food was on the table, we were ready to eat. 15 minutes after they get there, they get a call that they were exposed. And then we were exposed. So me and my family were exposed on Thanksgiving day after a 15 minute interaction. They left immediately. They ended up getting sick and I did not. Me and my husband and my son did not get sick. But um, yeah, that was pretty wild. That was that was one for the books. But I am so excited. We're all vaccinated now. So we're all going to get together. We're going to play Monopoly and we're going to crush it. We're going to bring back the old tradition. So I'm super excited. Oh, that's amazing. And I'm so excited for you to be with your family in a safe way. And that's such a crazy story. So I'm hoping for much better things this year and in the years to come. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, so next up we have Alexis. Um, before Alexis goes, I just wanted to give a shout out. Alexis recently shared a story with Creaky Joints about um, what it's like to be a mother in the pandemic and, and have the vaccine become available for her child. So just thank you, Alexis, for sharing your story. I've heard from so many people how much it helped them and made them feel seen. So just a shout out to you for being so vulnerable and sharing with us. And we'll ask you to share again, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's all good. I, I've i got a lot of feedback actually from a lot of my friends. Um, I'm a scientist by training. I'm still working on my PhD for those that don't know me. So, you know, when we write, it's always very just like, these are the facts, these are the details, <laughs> you know, these are my statistics. Um, and so it was nice to um, have that space again to 
explain kind of everything that had been going on with my life, um, especially since um, I actually got diagnosed with my rheumatoid arthritis during the pandemic and my disease is not stable. So, I mean, every day for me, is just like, <laughs> what's going to fall off today? Um, and so I've been very quiet about my experience um, to a lot of the people outside of my life. You know, I have a very tight circle of friends, but um, for them to be like, oh, wow, I didn't know this was happening or I didn't even think about that consideration or, or stuff like that. It was nice um, not dragging people in, but letting people in. Um, because I had built a pretty sturdy wall to keep people out because sometimes you just can't handle other people's emotions. And I'm like, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't with y'all. Um, I, I need to figure myself out first. Um, but um, yeah, I guess a little bit about that story. Like I said, um, I'm a scientist. I'm in my final year of my PhD, finally. Um, my child is here somewhere in the room. I think they're done with school now because we're, we're doing online school, but we did finally get them vaccinated two Saturdays ago, last Saturday. So I was super excited um, when that was available. I was looking everywhere throughout Houston, like, okay, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere has to have one of these vaccines, even if I have to take them to my job and be like, vaccinate them. <laughs> but we were finally able to, to do these things and, and get that all together. Um, and so that makes me feel a lot better. Um, I, as part of my, my RA right now, I, I tore a tendon in my foot, so I can't really travel right now. Um, I typically drive to go see my family, but they're six hours away. Um, so that's not gonna float well for me. Um, so I'm meeting their dad this weekend to pick them up to go home for the holidays and give me some time to recuperate and maybe I'll come up for Christmas, I don't know yet. I, I typically don't like going home, it's very small. Most of my friends aren't there. So I just <laughs> stay in my grumpy cat onesie in the back um, in my room um, playing video games and come out for snacks every now and again and then go back. <laughs> and my parents are like, are you okay? And I'm like, this is perfect. Um, I don't have to worry about anything. I can play video games and watch TV all day. Um, but I know growing up, um, I'm trying to think of like, maybe I guess a story. So my birthday is really close to Thanksgiving. Um, my birthday is on the 16th. So usually by the following Thursday, it's Thanksgiving. And so with uh, both of my parents being in the military, a lot of our friends and family can always get together. So I typically would also celebrate my birthday on Thanksgiving. Um, but I don't like cake. Um, I'm not a big cake person. So typically we celebrate my birthday with peach cobbler that my mom makes, which is like the absolute bomb um, because she'll sit there and like stew the peaches and add the brown sugar and the cinnamon and the nutmeg and a little bit of lemon you know she makes the crust makes the little dumplings that she puts in the cobbler it may not be official cobbler but that's what we call it and um, that's usually how I celebrate my birthday um, and so for me I know Thanksgiving does have some um, you know some dark history to it but it's always nice for me to just get to be with my family I get to eat all day which is like my second favorite thing to do um, and then I get a peach cobbler. Um, and typically, I was the one that had to cook for Thanksgiving. I guess that was part of my parents training me. Um, so I was always cooking um, for as long as I could remember um, until I finally moved out. So I, I thoroughly enjoy cooking. Thanksgiving was probably one of my favorites. Um, as most people said, they didn't like turkey. So I've done things like uh, quail, hen, rabbit, gumbos, um, seafood. Uh, prime rib. It just depends on what I wanted the menu to be. So we never didn't had really true, I guess, traditional Thanksgiving uh, foods. It just depended on how the spirit moved me that year. So I'm um, very happy to be here and get to share uh, some more of my story with you guys. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. And I mean, two wonderful things here. Happy birthday and happy last year of your PhD. This is all incredible. Um, and I love that you make Thanksgiving different every year. That's such a fun tradition. And thank you so much for sharing. Up next, we're going to hear from a few members of our GHLF team. You guys might know Amy. She's always behind the scenes on tech running Creaky Kitchen and pops in every now and then. So Amy, how are you? What can you share with us tonight? I am awesome, Zoe. Uh, it's so exciting to be here. Um, it's always cool when I get to pop out from behind the camera and say hi to everyone. I am so happy that Thanksgiving is around the corner because let me tell y'all, Thanksgiving is my jam. I love the turkey. Um, I like the dark meat, which a lot of people don't like. So the fact that I, I 
like the less popular option definitely works in my favor. Uh, stuffing, mashed potatoes, green beans, you name it, Thanksgiving, I am there. Um, the Finkelstein family Thanksgiving is, uh, you know, we have the whole gang together. Um, the Finkelstein clan is a little bit Jewish. Um, if we have any other Jewish folks in the house, you might remember um, sometime in the last 10 years, uh, we had a Thanksgivinga, which happens like once every hundred years or something ridiculous. It's when the holiday of Hanukkah falls on Thanksgiving. Um, so that was a, a really big deal in my family. And this year, we don't quite have a Thanksgivinga, but Hanukkah starts Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so it's going to be an honorary Thanksgiving in my household. And I'm so excited because uh, the first Thanksgiving, when I was a teenager, um, my mom found this awesome, awesome recipe online for cranberry apple latkes. Um, so latkes are Jewish potato pancakes. Um, they're fried in oil. It's a Hanukkah tradition. Um, but these are made with grated potatoes and also uh, green apple and cranberry. So they kind of have that sweet and savory thing going for them. Um, we don't make them often because they are saved for very, very special occasions. Uh, but since Hanukkah and Thanksgiving are falling on the same weekend and the same occasion this year, cranberry apple latkes are coming to town. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great time, guys. <laughs> Um, that sounds amazing. We might have to have you share this recipe on our next episode. I think I'm seeing a bunch of nods and it sounds like we need this. <laughs> well, thank you, Amy. Also on our GHLF team um, with his pet is Connor Mertens. Connor, how are you? Oh, we're doing great. Uh, I had to show off. Alexis got to brag about um, their kids, so I got to brag about mine. <laughs> this is Tonka, my best friend. This is our second Thanksgiving and he usually eats better than I do. Um, so great, first off, great to see everyone as always. Love getting to tune in and, and have these chats. Um, I'm super, I, you know, and, and this was something about earlier, we were talking about mac and cheese. This is my, and again, only for my closest friends here, I'll tell you guys. It's a truffle, garlic, Parmesan, black pepper. It's insane. It's so good. It goes it perfect with, I wouldn't say everything, but, uh, you know, potatoes, mac and cheese, definitely worth grabbing. Um, so uh, Thanksgiving is a big deal for um, my family, and I spent the last three years on the opposite coast. I was out in New York um, while the rest of my family is out here in Washington, <clears throat> uh, Washington State. And so uh, especially with the pandemic, after spending a couple years away from them and then doing another Thanksgiving over Zoom, uh, I was really uh, tired and, and missed my family a lot. So it's really nice that I, I moved back to Seattle recently um, and uh, get to see my family. This is the first Thanksgiving I've spent with them in about four years. And <clears throat> first time uncle, um, my brother had uh, their kid about, uh, um, I think a month. Uh, today is actually month one month of, of this child being in my life. And I'm so happy and I'm obsessed and I'm the best uncle in the world. Uh, you can uh, take that to the bank. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm honestly, oh, and then I, I had my, my, my favorite Thanksgiving recipe. It's so basic and I don't know if you can consider it like a, a, a recipe per se, but it's a delicious, delicious dessert and it's just apple snicker salad. And it's, it's what it sounds like. It's, it's apples, Snickers and whipped cream <laughs> and you just toss that up it's perfect and you get all your food groups in there really you know you get your dairy your nuts you get your yeah so fruits it's really all you need and that's a <laughs> and yeah it does count as a salad so uh, when 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 mom tells me to get my salad I get my my apple snicker salad but quick and easy delicious little treat um Again, just so happy to see you all. Thanks for everyone uh, uh, joining us today and, and always being so active in the community. Um, really looking forward to the rest of this year and, and 2022. So uh, thanks again. I have to ask, Connor, before you hit that mute button, do you have a favorite apple for this salad? Mm. Oh, you have to use green. You got it. Okay. I mean, you know, eh, the, the, there's this thing called the, this is now we're going really out there. It's called a grapple. And it's, it's like a genetically modified apple that has grape flavor, super good, 
very like i've only seen it well a few times best thing to use in it but green apples the sour with the with the uh you know the savory sweet of the um you get like a caramel apple it's it's incredible uh yeah but you guys awesome. learned all my secrets tonight i gotta i gotta keep these closer to the closer to my chest well it's a, it stays a secret if it's in the creaky kitchen right i think so what, what happens at creaky kitchen stays in creaky kitchen uh, yeah, I agree. Next up, we have Eddie, who you may recognize from the Psoriatic Arthritis Club podcast. If you haven't had a chance to listen yet, definitely listen. I'll drop a link in the chat. Hi, Eddie. How's it hey. going? It's good. How are y'all doing? Hope everyone's good. Um, I have, I usually have a very, I'm usually, I go home. I, I live in Atlanta now and um, I'm from Alabama. So Thanksgiving is always one of the holidays that we always were uh, together, mama's side of the family, because da my daddy's side of the family is in Arkansas. Yes, I say mama and daddy, so I am that Southern. Um, but <clears throat> we just have a small, intimate gathering of around 40 to 50 every year. Um, so we all get together. It's big potluck or covered dish, depending on where you're from, what you call it. So um, the aunts and uncles um, rotate who brings turkey and who brings dressing and then everybody else brings everything else that started that we would go to granny's on Thanksgiving and it's always lunch so we always get there around noon um, after the after the uh, parade is done and then you um, go down and all get together and it's one of the few times I get to see some of my some of my cousins especially now that I that I don't live in town anymore, but like I said, a, a small intimate gathering of, of, of 50, you know, that whenever I tell people that I do get looks, they're like, I'm like, well, I have that, I have that big of a family. Mom and daddy are both, um, no, mama's one of 10 and daddy's one of nine. So um, I have, you know, 20 to 30 first cousins on each side. And then um, apparently all of them have decided to have children as well. So it just, the family just keeps growing and growing and growing, but it's, 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 it's a tradition. We didn't get to, uh, we didn't get together last year. Um, so that was, I, I know mama was upset. She's like, you know, we could have done it more distant. I think she just likes getting together with her, um, with her family. So it kind of made her said that they weren't able to get together last year, but we're, um, we're all vaccinated. We're planning to get together uh, this year and it was it'll be it'll be good it'll be good to see some of the um, folks again but it's just it's just a, the tradition of the thing ever, ever since I can remember we all got to we would always get together on Thanksgiving and so it's it's good that to have that sort of that sort of tradition and that sort of uh, that sort of lore and, and uh, uh, family connection but um, it's just so as southern as you would imagine it to be there's a there's um beige foods and green foods and desserts so that's um basically basically what it is there are starches there are vegetables and there are desserts so that's that's the that's the southern thanksgiving for you that sounds delicious <laughs> uh i hope creaky kitchen can get an invite one year <laughs> because we need to try some of this food <laughs> thank you eddie Next up, we have Teresa, who is clearly the only one here that understood the assignment because she is looking fabulous in her Thanksgiving gear. Hey, Teresa, how are you? Um, yeah, you're unmuted. We can hear you. Hi, folks. Well, I grew up in a small Southern family. Um, my mom, dad, and Nana lived in the middle house had a great aunt and uncle on the right, a great aunt and uncle on the left, and that was it. So we would have the typical Southern Thanksgiving with the turkey and the Southern cornbread stuffing and the Waldorf salad and a million pound cakes and pies and uh, the green beans, the mashed potatoes, the whole nine yards. But it was small and slowly all the older ones died off and I'm the only child of an only child. so. I'm the only one left now. And um, when I started dating Mike, his family is huge. And so the first time I went to Thanksgiving at his house and there were 40 people, I was like, I'll never remember all these people. But um, they always do very heavy, starchy, a lot of fried foods. And so I started thinking, well, 
I didn't want to do something light. So I started doing a lightened up healthier version of an apple Waldorf salad. And you can use any kind of apples. So um, it's this is a mix of um, Red Delicious, um, Gala, Golden Delicious. And I chop up like six or seven of them. Um, and since I'm also diabetic, I don't know how many of my uh, rheumatoid friends are also diabetic, but Kroger makes a Carb Master yogurt that is low in carbs and low fat, high in protein. So I get the vanilla Carb Master yogurt, dump it in a big bowl, dice the apples, add the apples in, chop celery, add celery as much as you want, as little as you want. Um, and then you can add raisins, you can add cranberries, you can add both. Um, and I always do my freshly grated nutmeg with my little nutmeg grater and pumpkin pie spice. So, um, and if you, if you can't find, I remember last year I was very upset because Kroger was out of the large um, cartons of the vanilla yogurt. So I just bought six small ones of cinnamon roll and it turned out every bit as good with a little bit of a boost from the cinnamon flavor. And you just mix it all together and it's fabulous. And Mike's family even likes it and started asking me to bring it every year. And uh, so that's, that's my contribution is something a little bit lighter, a little bit healthier, but still delicious. So. Love it. And the cranberries are super festive for Thanksgiving. So that's exactly. a great addition. And I found out one fun fact. Um, I am related to eight people that came over on the Mayflower, the Samuel Fuller family. Um, and unfortunately, so I was, I've related to people that were actually at the first Thanksgiving, which to me, it just blows my mind. But sadly, Samuel and his wife, died the next spring but their son Samuel carried on the legacy which, so which explains why I'm here today but so I'm very grateful for Thanksgiving it's one of my favorite holidays that's awesome yeah thank you for sharing that with us sure. so before I turn it over to JP I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our 50 state network um, which JP is very familiar with she's advocated with us in the past the 50 state network is our, our group of advocates across the country, the 50 states, DC and Puerto Rico. And you know, if, if you're having trouble accessing medication and are fed up, or if you're having trouble getting the care that you need and are fed up, definitely come raise your voice with us. We advocate for policies that help improve access to care and treatments for anyone living with a chronic condition, which I'm sure JP can talk about. She's testified um, mm -hmm. and has just been instrumental in help getting legislation passed and, and make noise in front of stakeholders. Um, but you're here to share more fun stuff tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, I finally made it. <laughs> Better late than never. Um, so this Thanksgiving is very important for two reasons. Um, the first reason is um, I get to spend time with my grandparents who I have not spent Thanksgiving with for eight years. It was, it's been eight years. Part of the reason was when you're chronically ill, traveling, um, at the time I was living in Wisconsin, so traveling across the United States, whether it be by vehicle or plane, just did not seem like an option based on the fact that I have, um, you know, I deal with, with chronic migraine, but also um, I have fibromyalgia with arthritis. So a lot of you know how that is. It's very uncomfortable at times. So unfortunately, I did not get to spend, you know, the holidays with them for that long, but also COVID happened. So that kept us apart, but I'm excited because I get to go next week and see them. So it's, it's just, it's one of those, it's a small little victory because, you know, we have not spent time together in a while and I'm just excited. And yeah, so it's, it's, you know, just continue to create memories and no, I'm just, I'm looking forward to that. And I, it is a four hour drive, but again, you know, something I do a lot when I travel is I get out, walk around. So I take a constant breaks. So that's something that I still, even if I'm driving, you know, uh, 30 miles, I will get out um, kind of halfway through 
because again, sometimes I have issues with uh, my joints bothering me. So again, these are things that you learn over the years, um, you know, as someone that deals with various chronic um, conditions. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And um, I have a tip or something that I've done. Um, so my kids all have their favorite dish. So something that I've done since they were little, I always ask each kid, what do you want me to make specifically for Thanksgiving? Because, you know, everyone has a traditional, like your potatoes, you know, your turkey or ham, just again, depending on how you, you know, how you always prepare for Thanksgiving. So I have my son also who has a, a chronic illness. He always asks for a green bean casserole. And I will tell you a lot of times, um, <laughs> it is one of those things, it's kind of putsy because there's several things you need to do. But one tip I will tell you that I, I use it every year is that's a dish you can prepare ahead of time. And um, what I'll normally do is uh, I'll, you know, do whatever, get all the ingredients. I always do it the day before. Um, sometimes I'll do it in the morning because, you know, you're making bacon, you're putting inside, if, if, you know, that's what we put in the gravy casserole. So I'm thinking, okay, so I'll make some eggs and bacon and then, you know, reserve some for the green bean casserole, but then I'll take that and then I kind of just put everything together and I'll put it in a dish and set it in the fridge because again, you never know what you're gonna, how you're gonna feel Thanksgiving day. And I will tell you from experience, probably over the past 10 years, I'd say out of those five years, I maybe did not crawl out of bed until right before we ate. And so trying to navigate around that is, is complicated at times, but I've learned that there's certain things you can prepare ahead of times to avoid that. So that's something, again, I, you know, because you never know how you're going to feel, especially with me with migraine. I don't know if I'm going to wake up with a migraine in the morning. It always seems like it never feels that I get a migraine attack, usually on a holiday. I don't know why. <laughs> it just, it happens. And again, I don't want to disappoint my son who looks forward to Green Bay Cash for every year. So this, that's just a little tip that I, uh, again, picked up over the years that a lot of times you know, again, you don't know how you're going to feel, but if you can prepare things ahead of time, do it, you know, make it ahead of time. And that's one less thing you have to worry about, you know, having to do the day of. So yeah, just, just two little things I wanted to share. Thank you. That's Thank you. such a great tip. I know Chantel, um, last time when we made the soup had pre-cut veggies, which is like such a time saver too. anything you can get done in advance really helps me tremendously. So thank you for sharing that tip. And thank you everyone who shared tonight um, by speaking or writing in the chat and everyone just participating along. It's so great to hear from all of you. I'm going to see if we can check in with the chef, Chantel, how are our side dishes coming along? Right now we're doing pretty well. I just put the broiler on for the mac and cheese, which is pretty much so done. So we're just gonna put the broiler on high for a couple seconds, but I just wanted to show you these two sides. These are really, really simple, simple sides. Um, I, I've been making them since forever. Uh, like I said, this one, the, the sweet potatoes is a little bit of a change from what grandma used to do, but she approved, so it's all good. So what I have in here, and it's been going for about, mm -hmm. It went for about an hour on super low. So if you think of like, oh, also hair change, it's hot in here. It was 70 degrees in Boston today. Can you believe it? So what I have is two sweet potatoes. So fun fact, I'm the only person that lives in this particular house that likes sweet potatoes. Someone else that lives here doesn't. So instead of doing the big tray that I used to do, I now have to limit, which is good because we're not wasting, we're not contributing to food waste on the planet and things like that, so that's all good. So that's how I came up with the braised Savannah sweet potatoes. So I've got sweet potatoes in here that I cut up. Um, also, uh, like you said before, Zoe, great tip, find things in the store that are already cut up. Sweet potatoes is one of those things, you can find them in one inch cubes. Uh, you can find them already pre-shrunk shrunk wrap for putting in the microwave and making uh, baked sweet potatoes. They're just a great source of vitamins and they're delicious despite 
what other people who live here say. Anyway, <laughs> he's, he's right there. So. <laughs> so what I have in here is I have our sweet potatoes that I've made into big rounds. Um, they're about a half an inch thick. Um, and then for the bigger side of them, I cut them in half. I've got butter because butter, brown sugar, vanilla, and cinnamon, and a little bit of salt. Because as you know, with a lot of like even baked goods, stuff like that, a little bit of salt just brings out all the other flavors. So everyone debated me at first. Oh, they're not going to be as good as the ones that are baked and whatnot. No, they're delicious. And they are super tender. Look, this is just a spatula. Oh, so good. And then in the pan, you've got this delicious syrup that you can just spoon on top. And then back here, I have what somehow became my grandmother's favorite greens. Now she was known for being just a great cook. She had 10 children plus adopted one. So that's a lot of people to feed on a regular basis. So I fill you with those giant family reunions. Um, and back here are her favorite greens made with smoked turkey. Um, a lot of my family stopped eating um, um, fat back and pork and things like that. So we started doing it with smoked turkey and no one was upset. So these I started last night. Um, I fell asleep and woke up at one o'clock in the morning, turned them off, woke up at 2.30 and put them away because they were cool enough. That is dedication to a recipe. And I do this every time I make collard greens. And apparently these were requested to be delivered this evening to one of our dear family members who is recovering. So hopefully these will get over to her shortly. They are spicy. There's a ton of spice in these. I put a lot of um, hot sauce and chili flakes and um, a secret ingredient that I can't tell you because my grandmother would kill you, but it's in there and it's delicious. If you follow me on Twitter, I may or may not tell you. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to check out <laughs> and see if our, oh my goodness, you guys. We're gonna take it out. We're gonna take this out together. And we're gonna put it on my dad's favorite trivet, which is frogs, which is really weird. And I don't understand why he had this obsession with frogs, but one day I'll figure it out. Do you guys do you hear the sizzle? Do you hear the sizzle? Oh my goodness. So that is our mac and cheese. We've got to wait till it cools down. I can't serve it yet. I'm sorry. I can't do that portion of it with you, but I can do this for you because I'm a benevolent host. This is my apple pie sangria. I make it just about every holiday season. Um, I didn't make it last year, which I'm upset about, but it's really, really good. So in here we have apple cider, cinnamon sticks, cloves, um, some, some freshly grated nutmeg, shout out to the freshly grated nutmeg gang, uh, oranges, apples, and lemons. And it goes over ice. And all those flavors come together and literally it tastes like you're drinking an apple pie. And um, if you've got to deal with 50 plus family members, probably a great thing to have. So um, from our Creaky Kitchen to yours, happy Friendsgiving. Thank you guys so much for coming to visit us and I'll toss it back to you, Zoe and Corey. Yeah, I'll toss it back to Corey. I'd love to hear how it's going in your kitchen. Uh, it was going great until I just put my thumb through a bag of flour and now have to clean this all up. So other than that, it was going wonderful. Uh, I think I need to get a new bag of flour, apparently. Uh, but other than that, uh, it smells amazing. I'm a couple minutes behind Chantel, so I can't take the, the mac and cheese out yet. Um, but the, the sweet potatoes are going. I had to get some kind of vegetable here tonight. So I include, and so I also am roasting some beets um, because that's a new thing that I have now started to get into after 28 years of my life, hating beets and thinking they tasted like dirt. Uh, my fiance introduced me to roasted beets with a little bit of balsamic vinegar and a tiny bit of goat cheese, and that's delicious. So anyone who's hesitant about beets, highly recommend that. Um, but other than all of that, uh, I really wanted to just say thank you, everyone, for, uh, for coming tonight. Uh, we have another uh, show coming up in December, so then uh, please join us for that. 
And then after that, we're going to go on a little break uh, till the new year. Um, but if you have any ideas for any type of future events, feel free to email myself or Zoe. Uh, we're always looking for new ideas. Um, again, thank you all for joining us and happy Thanksgiving. And I see Santel has one more thing to say. One more thing. Uh, for our next episode, we're going to be doing something sweet. I started this because of the goddess that is Ina Garten. This is homemade vanilla extract. You know, she always says, get the good vanilla extract. Well, this is the good vanilla extract. So I started this three weeks ago. It will be ready by the time our next show airs. So I need ideas involving vanilla that we can do on the show because I will tell you this, I opened it up this weekend and just smelled it. Oh, Madam, it was so <laughs> good. So if you guys have any vanilla ideas, please reach out. Um, I, I, I served the apple pie sangria to my in-house in co-host and it is now gone as is the apple. So apparently it went over well. So if you guys have any ideas about vanilla, please let me know. Thank you guys again so much. And thank you, Corey and Zoe for, for facilitating such a great show and happy anniversary, guys. Happy anniversary, happy Thanksgiving and everyone have a great night and thanks again for joining.